Jesus. Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, uh, we come to you tonight in the humblest way that we know how. We pray for Paris. We pray for the families of those 153 victims. And we pray for the gunmen. And Father God, in our own lives, sometimes it seems like it is open season. But Father God, tonight we ask that you move not by might or power, but just move by your spirit. The same God that's in America and the UK and Australia and Florida and Tennessee and New York, India, New Mexico, Mexico, San Juan, Puerto Rico. The same God that's in these places, he's over there in Paris. That's what we love about God. He can be everywhere at the same time. And God, tonight we ask that you will comfort hearts tonight and remind all of us that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. And Father God, tonight we ask that you will just uh, open up our hearts tonight that we may hear a word from the Lord. We love you, we praise you, and we magnify you. We just want to tell you thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church said, Amen. Uh, good evening, everybody. First, giving honor to God, who's the head of all of our lives. And to all of you tonight uh, that have stopped by for just a little while, we thank you uh, for being here with us tonight. And we don't do scope buys. And we will tell you at the end of service tonight how you can join our church. Um, we are the first church of Periscope. And uh, we're not periscoping a church service. Uh, we're having church service on Periscope. And we say good evening to our regulars like Stephanie, Six Pack Mommy, all the way to our new uh, faces. And Maxine says she's been here before. But if this is your first time, uh, I hope you put up a, a, a thumb uh, so that we can welcome you accordingly. It is a blessing. Uh, for us to be here and when things like uh, what happened in Paris and uh, when the trade towers fell and when uh, attacks have happened over here and when the uh, the Boston Marathon bombing and uh, things of that nature happened, we began to scratch our head and ask questions like, where is God? Uh, but I stopped by to let you know tonight, God is still uh, where he's always been right here. And God is still God. He's still on the throne. He's still in control. Uh, there's not no kink in his armor. Uh, these are perilous times. And I'm here to tell you right now, these times like what has happened tonight, uh, this morning, or when the attacks happen, it reminds us how precious uh, life really is. And these are times where we ought to uh, quit being so trivial and majoring on the minor, and we ought to, uh, we are minor, we're majoring on things that really don't matter in the scheme of things. We, we're holding grudges, we're unforgiving, we're, we get malicious, and we get um, uncaring sometimes, but that should never be said of us as believers. We always uh, should hold our heads up and and talk about the goodness of God and uh, miss, uh, in the midst of all of the trials of life, we still can raise our hand and say God is still a good God. Amen. And so let's run tonight. Let's run tonight uh, to Job, the first chapter. I love this response. Job chapter one. Uh, Job 1, 20, 21, and 22. Job 1, 20, 21, and 22. Apostle Mike, good evening. And everybody, come on and nestle around the altar tonight. Uh, because immediately following the word, we're going to have an altar call tonight. And we're just going to ask you to, to just lay before the Lord. And we're going to call on the name of the Lord. We got his attention tonight. Praise God. Uh, Job chapter 1. Thank you, Bernie. Job chapter 1. And I tell you what, let's go to verse 20. 20, 21, and 22. 
Let's tack on one more verse with the verses that Bernie listed. Job 1, 20, 21, and 22. Oh, I'm, I'm full tonight. It's good to see some new faces tonight. It's good to see the regulars as well. And we had a great gratitude challenge day, day number four. We're going to day 21. And we'll have another uh, full broadcasting day next Friday if you were not part of it today. Uh, we had a great gratitude challenge and it just touched my heart to see the lives that are being impacted by what we're doing. Lady Sandra, what? Job 20, uh, Job chapter 1, 20, 21, and 22. Nicole, you touched my heart. Uh, Wilma, Beth, uh, Everybody that scope, Donna, everybody touched my heart today. Laura and everybody that scope really touched my heart. And God knows what he's doing. Amen. Uh, Job chapter 1, 20, 21, and 22. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. And said, naked came out of, out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. Then Job arose, and rent his mouth, and shaved his head, and fell down upon the ground, and worshipped. And said, naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sin not, nor charged God foolishly. I, I want to ask a question as I always do. What is your first response? What is your first response? What is tonight? I, I want to ask you tonight, Maxine, and, and all of my fellow para, uh, First Church of Periscope members, what is your first response? Uh, when you hear bad news tonight, uh, what are you inclined to do? Uh, the scriptures let us know that uh, Job got a barrage of bad news. Amen, Bernie. When we, when we read the text tonight, uh, Job got a lot of bad news and and it was one after another. Uh, his 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 livestock was gone. His 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 material blessings were attacked. Uh, his his servants were killed. His children died all of a sudden. He, he woke up. Uh, a millionaire. He 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 woke up in the morning. Everything was fine. But by nightfall. All hell had broken loose. And, and the average one of us, when we hear things that, that rattle us and shake us, sometimes our first response is to all oh, throw up our hands and say, Oh Lord, why me? It, it, it can range from anything from a, a, a loss of employment or loss of life. Or as in the case of today, uh, a, a, a gunman open fire on innocent people. But what is our response when we do hear bad news? If we are not in the right place with God, we, we have a tendency, unlike Job, we have a tendency, Pookie, to blame God. We, we have a tendency to shake our finger at, at God and say, Lord, why did you let this happen? Lord, I don't understand. I, I've done all I could because the Bible does say of Job that he feared God. He was an upright man and he, he, he stayed away from evil. The, the Bible calls him a just and upright man and, and he lived in such a way that even God, Brad on him and, and told the devil at the board meeting the devil was going to and fro to seek uh, to find some devil men. And, and God tapped him on the shoulder and said, why don't you go check out Job? And Job and, 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 and the, the devil challenged God and said, well, if you if you put your hand against him. But God had to remind Satan, oh, you don't tell me what to do, but I tell you what I will do. I'll open the hedge. And let you in his yard, but you can't bother him because he belongs to me. 
are the first thing I must leave with you tonight to help you answer the bell accordingly. Number one, you better know that you know that you know. Number one, you better know that you are God's property. I need some help tonight. I know those people that were at that theater tonight, eating and watching their their sports or their movie. I know the last thing on their mind was being attacked by some some strange gunman tonight. I know that was the furthest thing from their mind. But I hope in those 153 lives, I hope they were God's property because I want you to know tonight, First Church of Periscope, regardless of what happens down here, you better know that you know that you know that you are God's property. I am like Saul David tonight in Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. I'm like Apostle Paul over in Romans chapter 8 and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God who are the call according to his purpose. Or like John chapter 3, you must be, you got to be born again. I stop by to let you know tonight we are all of God's creation uh, but we are not all God's children. Like Big Mama said, you got to be, you sure enough got to be born again. Come on somebody. All of us, Romans 3.23 said, all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I don't have to apologize for one sin or another sin. All sin, all sin is unrighteousness to God. I don't need to apologize for how the church talks to one but or another, all of us are guilty before God. None of us can pass God's judgment bar without grace and mercy. I know you're looking at me strange tonight, but let me look at you now, ball. I'm not going to apologize for this because I want you to know I would not be doing my job if I don't challenge you tonight. And number one, make sure you are God's property tonight. I need some help, Nicole. I need some help, Bernie. I need some help, Sean. I need some help, Heidi. Oh, it's good to have your name on a whole lot of rolls. It's good to be uh, have membership at all these stores. It's good to have the American Express card. You better not leave home without it. But I'm here to tell you tonight, you better not leave Earth without salvation. <laughs> Come on, somebody. You uh, in some places don't even accept American Express, so you can leave home without it, Master card goes anywhere. Visa goes anywhere. But before you leave this earth, you better know that you're God's property. That's why I can respond accordingly tonight because I belong to God. I belong to my family. I belong to my church. I belong to different organizations. I belong to some business organization. But tonight, Latanya, I belong to God tonight. That's why I know that nothing can bother me. I'm like MC Hammer tonight. You can't touch me devil. If God don't open my head, you can't bother me. That's how that couple, the bullets swung right by them tonight because it was not their time. It's not your time. If you woke up today, God is not done with you because we belong to God. To help you respond accordingly, you got to know that you belong to God. That's what makes me excited tonight. Not that I'm perfect. Not that I do everything right. I belong to God and my Bible tells Tells me since I belong to God, He loves me. We love Him because He first loved us. Romans 5 a said, If God, Christ commanded His love toward us, and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Oh, can I get a witness tonight? It's good to know y'all love me. I know it's good for y'all to know I love you. But tonight, what supersedes that is that God loves us tonight, even those gunmen. Even those gunmen tonight, even though they killed 153 people, God loves them too. And before you look at me side-eyed, you killed some folks. You may not have pulled the trigger. You may not have stabbed nobody. You may not even thrown a brick at nobody. But you have used your tongue to lie on somebody. You've used your tongue to talk about somebody. You've used your tongue to gossip on somebody. So why you want to look down on those gunmen? You have been a character assassin tonight, and you better thank God for grace and mercy tonight. 
I'm so glad tonight that God loves me anyhow. You need to know that you're God's property because when the devil went to get Job and bother all of Job's stuff, God said, Job, leave Job alone because Job belongs to me. I'm so glad tonight that all the stuff I could brag about, I could stand flat footed and tell you tonight, I belong to God. That's how I can preach to y'all every night because me and God got a love thing going on. I need some help tonight. So that's why when you belong to God, you can respond like Job responded. How did he respond, Dr. Sims? The second thing I got to leave with you, Job worshipped. Oh, I need some help tonight. When he got all that bad news, when he shaved his head and rent his clothes, he acknowledged the tribulation. He acknowledged the trouble. You, I don't want to ever mislead nobody. I acknowledge trouble tonight. Y'all know when my dad died. You know I had car trouble this week. Y'all know I got fired from a job. So I have never tried to sell y'all a, a, a false sale, a bill, a bill of sale tonight. I have let you know when I go through things. So it's not the fact that Job denounced the trouble. He acknowledged the trouble by renting his clothes and shaving his head but what he did in response he worshiped God and so tonight when you understand trouble has come when you know that trials and tribulation are knocking on your door it's not time to post on Facebook it's not time to tweet a scope it's not time to call your friend it's not time to run down the street and tell your mama and them it's time to fall down on your knees and worship the Lord it's time to say Lord you give and Lord you've taken away but blessed be the name of the Lord because what is worship Dr. Sam? Worship is not the ringing of a bell worship is not a certain song worship is a not a, a sound on an instrument worship is speaking well of God when things happen you don't understand you still are God's PR personnel you are still God's ambassador you are still God's cheerleader when things happen you don't understand understand. That's when y'all the flat foot tell everybody, my God is still a good God. That that just happened not good, but God is still good. First Thessalonians 5.18 said, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God concerning you. I'm here to tell you right now, our God is still a good God. I know things happen that make you scratch your head, but I'm here to tell you right now, God is a good God. Boom! God is a good God tonight. Can I get a witness tonight, Sandra? Can I get a witness? I know all of us got some stuff we going through. I know all of us got some trials and tribulation. But I want to be the first in line to say I still, I'm still satisfied with him. I'm not going to turn my back on God. If anything, I'm going to get a little bit closer to him. Because I'm here, I'm just like Job. He gives, he takes away. I came in this world naked. I'm going to leave naked. But blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm going to speak well of God because I, I, I belong to him. Can I get a witness? Uh, I, I got to leave you now. Uh, it got so bad. Bernie, Sean, Maxine, it got so bad. Uh, that Mrs. Joe, uh, she was one of those cute girls uh, from around the way. It was all right while Joe Keith Shepherd, it was all right while Job had it going on. Uh, but the, the the straw that broke the camel back one morning, uh, they woke up. Because the devil had to go back to God and say, well, uh, he still want to praise you, but let me try one more thing. Uh, the devil attacked his body. Uh, he got bars all over his body. Uh, I was so bad when Miss Joe woke up. She didn't even recognize her husband. She turned to him while she packed the bag. Ah, uh, she said, "You ought to curse God and die." But Job said, "Shall we receive only good from God?" Ah, uh, in all my appointed time, I'm gonna wait till my change come. Job said over in Job twenty three and ten. When he has tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. 
Ah, uh, but Job had some friends that stopped by his bedside. Job, ah, uh, Job, at the end of seven days of silence, one of his friends said, Job, we know you done done something wrong. Another friend said, oh, Job, you ought to go on and confess your mess. Uh, but I'm glad he had another friend like L. Hugh that said, Job, I don't know what's going on. Uh, but you ought to have a little talk with the Lord. Job began to scratch his head and said, well, if I had known this, uh, I would have rather be stillborn uh, and not even been born. Some theologian confused this. But Job never cursed God. He only cursed his birthday. Uh, I know some of y'all that felt like that. Uh, if God, if I was going to go through all that, I should have died in my mother's womb. But I'm so glad God loved Job. Uh, that he told his heavenly host, y'all chill here for a minute. I'm going to go down and talk to old man Job. God knocked on the window sill. Job. Ah, uh, Job. Oh, I need some help tonight, y'all. Job. Ah, uh, Job. Job lift the window up. God said, Job, where were you, Job, when I put the sun in the sky? Where were you, Job, when I put the moon in the nighttime? Where were you, Job, when I put flight in the wings of a bird? Where were you, Job, when I put the roar in the lion's voice? Where were you, Job, when I measured out the earth? Where were you, Job, when I breathed in the man's nostrils and man became a living soul? Where were you, Job? Uh, Job had to beg God's pardon. Job had to say, God, I only knew about you in my head. And I had a certain understanding about you. But now I know you in my heart. Job began to pray for his friends. Because now he understand God a little bit better. My Bible tells me in Job 42.10. That God turned the captivity of Job. When he prayed for his friends. The only thing. I'm going to leave with you tonight that God is about to turn it around. He's about to turn it around for you. All you got to do is hold on a little bit longer and God is about to turn it around. Can I get a witness tonight? 